that all of this is tremendously complicated in terms of accountabilities and mandates and personally I would regard the creation of CBC Limited as a big step forward. Previously it was the case that if there was a problem on the campus you had to try and track down the individual organisation that you felt was um, had ownership of it and, and try and get them to, to take responsibility on and that didn't always work very well. So at least now there is one body that in theory one can approach. But I think what Barry's experience describes is also um, how difficult this business of meaningful community engagement is. And I take my hat off to the campus for wanting to embark on this process. Um, they didn't have to. Uh, and I think we've done some learning. Definitely um, Barry did not have full knowledge of where this process was going to go when he agreed to toddle along to a few meetings. And frankly, neither did I. So, um, you know, it, it, in the spirit of what I said at the start of the meeting, we, we experiment with stuff and we see what works and we learn from it and I think that's what's going on at the moment. Um, yeah, do that. <coughs> so I guess when so I guess when I retired, what brought me out in retirement was CBC Limited that made some commitment to have better community engagement, um, which is why I went in the first place. And I can understand why this all seems like, and I understand Barry's position as well, actually it was an experiment when we set it up. And I can understand um, this comes as quite a shock or surprise at how far it appears to have got um, so quickly. And perhaps the reason for that is we haven't been going through a consultation. We haven't even started the consultation. What we've done is try to involve the community from the very beginning of the process. And I think if, if David Plank was here describing his role as CBC Limited, he would also have been shocked. We basically just brought you into the team and shared things live with you. And that's why documents were changing. Whilst, whilst Barry's really not saying, done. well, it's moved on, it's another week. And actually, it could be quite a shock. Uh, it's actually probably a little bit more, not quite the way a company works. But it, it is surprising if you aren't used to that, how quickly things do move and how quickly things change. So, what I'd say to you is that I can understand why Barry has the concerns he has, and we've discussed them. It's the good thing about being part of a community. Um, what I would reassure you was, this is the start of a process, and the contributions made by Barry, David, uh, and, the, and the great shelters uh, did uh, make uh, a difference. Uh, Sorry? Uh, Annabelle. And, and Annabelle and Malcolm did make a difference. The, the mod there were modifications made along the way, and where we couldn't find modifications, we allowed or encouraged the residents' associations to put in their own response that we put in alongside us. Like I say, the reason you have to heard about this, this has not yet gone to the councillors. This is not yet a consultation. The consultation was you, the human, and with me. I assume that starts in the summer after we've decided which ones to include. Once they've included the site within the local plan or not, and we don't know the answer to that, there will then be another consultation. What one is should be in there? And then once it's in there, what it should, should start to look like. And that's when you'll start to see the shiny brochures with people playing happily in fields and, and trees which will never exist. So we haven't actually got anywhere near that stage. What we're trying to do is put our own stake in the ground as a biomedical campus with no land interest to ourselves. On if there was an expansion, this is what the expansion would look like from our perspective to create a world leading site and a world leading hospital. What we're going to figure out next, and Sam's going to help us now, is how, what, what is the best way to engage the community? It's a huge weight on Barry on Barry's shoulders. He has to represent it. Then. We go to the councillors, they don't want to talk to us because it's too early in the local plan, and they don't want to be somehow compromised doing it. It's it's a, it's a really interesting and complex. So can, can I add one further frustration? That having submitted this what we um, what we like and what we don't like to, to the planners, we have asked for a meeting with Steve and Kelly. We asked for that last December. And we still have not been granted a meeting with Stephen Kelly to talk about what we, uh, what, what our thoughts are. Um, the planners are playing their own game, uh, as far as we can see. Maybe a better way of phrasing it would be that the planners are working through their process, and CBC is able to take a more um, flexible and agile approach 
to ha to how it wants to engage with its communities. And I and I think when you've got a very um, heavily regulated planning system, and then businesses who are wanting to, to get on with things, there's there's a tension there, and the. I think the issue that Barry described about the speed of change in the documents is part of that. But also there are issues around commercial confidentiality. So I kind of sent Barry into the lion's den as the conduit, and then the idea was that on the basis of what he fed back, we as the community forum would be feeding it into the community through the magazine, through the emails, whatever mechanisms were appropriate. But a lot of the time, commercial confidentiality meant that there was information Barry couldn't share with me, never mind with everybody else. So when I talk about this as an experiment and a, a place for learning, you know, for me, that, that was a big piece of learning, that um, there, was a, there was a wall came down between the people on the campus side of it, including the person I thought was our representative there, and the rest of us. Sh shall we have some questions then? Because I think this is generating some interest. Um, let's start uh, very quickly, when considering all the traffic of the abortion and people working, has the community the congestion charge been taken into this? <laughs> so, so one of the things that's in the um, campus travel plan, which is in the old one or in the new one, and is part of 2050 vision, is the commitment to bring the number of cars which we'll talk about coming onto campus back to 2017 level. So theoretically, if there was if there was sufficient public transport provision through a train station, through schemes, through congestion charge, whatever it is, the intention is to bring it back down to a level lower than it is at the moment. And, and of course, the, on the people's side, you don't see we have to share the, the, the listed plan because it will change again. There's no there's hardly any new car coming. So the way you do it, you just don't have a car park. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of in my say in favour of road, a favour of the park and ride, will be cut up on the, the chief park parking place for well, I hope you get the train buses that are going to be the So I, I am going to crack my whip on this because otherwise I can see this is going to very rapidly turn into a, a, a free for all. So sorry, I am going to be rigid about it. But Lady, no, don't worry, I'm going to see the individual councillors. It's all about the selfishness. How many people in this room stand at bus stops? I do. I can hardly walk. I'm determined to save. I've been students who can't get home at night from groups. People work, they have to live out of Water Beach. We've got people at the heart unit who come to break some parents. They're desperate. And property is so expensive. And we live in a smart house, Sandy Taylor Road. We work for it. I will, we will not sell. We've got people after it because I know what they're going to do with it. We want the garden, bring wildlife, you know, etc. And it's just the way people have been brought up. Half the planners haven't caught buses. They haven't bought anywhere. They will be in the car. They don't see the problems. If you do the thing yourself, you can see. You can all do. Same. I know some people side them. But I'm not going to do this. I'm 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 going to do this. i am going to so I'm, I'm just going to try and get around as many people as possible, and if you could keep to, to questions, that would be really helpful. I just want to focus on one thing that's not good. Yes, it's been great to have all the companies, have all the companies here. You haven't told us how many people they propose to have on the site, but I, what I want to focus on is that attracting successful companies raises salaries in the area. I remember talking to two people about to say on a train, and they'd moved down to Albany Park or whatever it was in Macclesfield. They were clearly paid very well, and Astro didn't reckon just how much it was going to cost them. But, and they could afford to send their children to private school. But what's going to happen to salaries? And I'm particularly concerned about salaries in the hospital itself. 
I had the good fortune or misfortune, oh, actually, to be in Amber for 16 days, and I witnessed just how overworked they were, just how stressed they were. You can build all this glorious stuff, but what about the hospitals that they sent you? If you're really serious about making use of space that came from the infrastructure possible, then you build an equal number of structures outside Cambridge as inside Cambridge, so that you've got two-way traffic, making it as efficient as possible. It ain't very efficient. I mean, we live five minutes away. Okay, and it was a complicated question. I'm not quite sure what the question was. The question is. Um, there are a lot of implications. Obviously, transport is a major one. I could talk about that for a while. I'm saying, of course, that the impact on the, the hospital itself, attracting people to work here, when the Royal Patworth came, they hoped many people would come from Patworth, but they, they wouldn't come. Again, because they'll get stuck on the motorway in traffic jams. And, and you, that has to be taken as fundamental. All the, a lot of the other stuff was peripheral. And yes, there's lots of bureaucratic nonsense there. That's still not a question. I think probably the issue of, of salaries is outside and into the myth. And I, and I am interested also to get some questions. Obviously, the, the transport and the planning side of what the campus is, is doing is so important to people, but I am also interested in the community engagement bit and some ideas and some feedback for Andy to take back to the campus to carry on developing this, this work. Nikki? I just, since one of the drivers of growth is this quest for co-location for mutual support. And yet we're hearing from you that actually there's very little cross-pollination. So my understanding quite a while ago was that there were sort of 13 entities at the campus, but you didn't list 13 things as part of CBC Limited, I don't think. Yeah. So can you tell us who isn't part of it? And what does that mean for us? Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not sure how relevant it is. It, it's the test the small things, so the blood transfusion service aren't part, uh, GSK have a small clinical trial unit, so it tends to be just the, the, the smaller things around there. You're right about the collaboration though. At the moment, if you look at the private sector on there, it's OutCam and AstraZeneca actually have suddenly moved in. So we know when AstraZeneca moved in, they already have lots of collaborations with the LMB, with OutCam, with the hospitals. So we saw it, what I'm saying is it's an evolving model. And that's why the 2020 vision didn't really work very well. So it hasn't provided that environment that we really need. And that's why the presenters are saying we need more stuff. We need a conference centre, we just need just a cafe would help. And actually with those things, knowing the world leading capability there, LMB 12 mil prize winners, third highest rated global uh, clinical school in the world, AstraZeneca, the largest company, it has all the elements for being a, a huge, hugely um, important site of the UK. Okay, uh, a comment is that if you want to resolve a lot of these problems, you have to put the housing in amongst the uh, research park with the day nurseries and the shop and whatever else, so that you don't have all this commuting problem and you don't have a massive housing problem. My question is also, if you develop all the land around Addenbrooke's, where are you going to rebuild Addenbrooke's? Um, the map store that I've shown is Addenbrooke's 3. Well, what is Addenbrooke's 3? The new Addenbrooke's will be like the old Addenbrooke's, because there'll be a completely different way of doing care. There'll be more care in the community. So it'll be more like a hub and spoke model. But you can decide that's, that's the way health care is going on. Um, yeah. um, that amount of care. Yeah, I've, 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 absolutely, I forgot what your question that was. But, so, but you're right, so one of the. So actually, I've come into this quite late. So I came into the last global plan, the decision wasn't to build the housing in Cambridge, it was to build it outside of Cambridge and link it to Cambridge with sustainable transport goods. So I've, I've spent the last five years trying to, trying to square that off, and, it, and it's not easy. But it wasn't me who decided the local plan was to build them there, but put the, put the house there. If we put the houses where the job is in the first place... The biomedical campus is outside Cambridge. Well, it depends. It, it, it depends on how... It was fields. So Queen is in, in the city? Yes. Yes, it is. Queen, 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 Queen is in the city. Queen is the city council. The, city council, council. So the biomedical is. council was built on fields that were outside Cambridge. So it would be a legitimate place to put the housing. 
we needed, and I now live here and have my parents to live here. Um, but so for me, I think it's about going to people, going to where the people are who live here, because um, the community forum is great, and look, there's brilliant engagement on the newsletter. Obviously, everyone here tonight doesn't represent everyone in the community. You've got a lot of families, international um, people. Lots of people who work on the Lots of people who work on the I don't work there, but um, I do work for the NHS, CPFT outside in Fullbourne. Um, but I do feel that there are issues that aren't perhaps at the forefront of, say, my parents' minds who have paid off their mortgage and are retired. So they're in a very different situation to a lot of people who live in Queen Edis. And I think you don't get the engagement from them because they won't, you know, people are busy and they're working, etc. and they've got young families. But I think going to where people are is really important because those people's voices need to be represented as well. Uh, just to, to um, sort of back that up, uh, I did a presentation at a university run event in 2021, which was about levelling up within the region. And I asked the first 25 people in the Food Hub queue on the Saturday morning before I did the event how many of them had heard of AstraZeneca, Abacam, and Arm, as the three kind of big local technology companies. 17 of the 25 had heard of AstraZeneca, though I regret to say, Andy, that was all in relation to the vaccine. They didn't know AstraZeneca were based in Cambridge. Six of them had heard of ARM, because they, they have links in Cherry Hinton. No one knew about Abcam at all. So there is a huge disparity between the bits of the population who are aware of what's going on in the tech sector and the bits for whom it's, it's simply, you know, vacuum. So, yeah, I mean, some, some ideas about how you can get out yeah. to talk to those people, I think, would be so, good. So, AstraZeneca would run um, a huge trust with the football club, exactly for that reason. We knew that we, we do lots of community outreach to AstraZeneca. AstraZeneca, mm -hmm. AstraZeneca do a lot of community outreach to go to lots of schools and go up to Peterborough and all around the area. But it's clearly a, that catch the people who are interested in science, so it tends to be a science project. So we've developed something called Messy Science, where footballers come along because the kids will look at the footballers. And so we have a Messy Science thing, which AstraZeneca sponsors, so we join them into football club. And that's the, that's the sort of thing you need to get to, so you get to those, those different sorts of people that we use. This one is really for everyone to think about, given how um, complex um, we've heard the governance systems. And a question also for you, Andy, is given your experience on the GCP, has Cambridge and South Cambridge got its governance structures right, or does it need a massive overhaul given how we've heard? The city council can't even afford to staff a new community pavilion, and yet we heard in Cambridge University's report that they're generating £233 million directly from tourism. What is the method of getting the wealth that we're supposedly creating to basically fund and support and maintain our basic infrastructure? Because we're not just a science hub, we are a city made up of people. So thanks, Anthony. Yeah, that's a live question for you. Uh, and actually, many people as well. So what's interesting is that there's no, there's no money, no money from the businesses that are going back into cities. Actually, the government gave City Shield 500 million pounds to be matched by 500 million pounds. So actually, there was a lot of money. The problem is, this is money given by the central government for specific things that the central government thinks the area needs. It hasn't devolved its spending to the local area. That's that my starting point. And you, you, I, mean, I know you think about this a lot, and that, that's, that's the fundamental problem. It's the way that tax is distributed in the country. If it's all coming down from the centre to do things that the centre want, rather than the centre to devolution, and let the area decide how to spend this billion pounds, then the solutions will be very different. I think some of that money was given to the potter, wasn't it? No, no, no. There was a pot of money, and, and, and the problem was it, was it was to create the infrastructure for future growth. The problem is the money was actually required to deal with the growth that had already happened. So we've got a double deficit. So I'm, you, you come into the situation relatively there and realise that a lot of things haven't been solved from five or ten years ago 
and yet a new tranche of money had come in to do even more things into the future. So actually the infrastructure deficit in Cambridgeshire is about one to two billion, what I've heard, over and over city money. And the only money we've got is money gone through the GCP to do the specific things to enable growth. Okay, any more questions? Yeah, so I'm here from um, the Rustat Neighbourhood Association, which is a, um, a neighbourhood association in the neighbourhood of Coleridge. Um, uh, but we're interested in these issues as well, which is why I've come along and um, we're important to engage as well. Um, I'm kind of interested in CBC and its role in this and who's driving this. Um, 2050 Vision was signed by the leaders of all of the organisations you've mentioned as now being members of CPC, I think. Um, so all of those people were in effect signing a manifesto for private sector development of the CPC expansion. And that, that, that was the 2050 vision was to have a healthcare future. Well, the 2050 vision, I encourage people to read that by the way, says next to nothing about healthcare. It's all about the economic benefits of cluster development. But, but the primary signatories that made that the major funders of CBC Limited are the three hospitals and the university. Well, precisely, and that's what's intriguing because <coughs> in the case of the three hospitals, there's no there's quite a lot of obvious downside to the expansion of the campus in terms of more people into more demand, like the overstretched hospitals. Not for obvious what the upside is. And in fact, the reason I'd encourage people to win twenty fifty is because it says next to nothing about healthcare. It yes, says three things essentially. It says people will benefit from access to research intensive hospitals, or well, we already do that, and books of Papworth. It says it talks vaguely about what we might call sort of um, cluster spillover benefits without giving any good evidence to, as to that. And it says there'll be some new hospitals built soon. <laughs> Without defining what soon means. Uh, so I think I've got the map. So there's the Children's Hospital, there's the Oncology Hospital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, 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 sorry, sorry, I think. So, so, sorry, my, my question is my question is is CBC driving this or is it responding to it? Responding uh, to this when you say this. The development proposals. The developer proposals of Pro Rochester. The proposals for the expansion land to the south of the campus. The 2050 vision described an outcome, and part of that outcome said that we need to be more land to achieve that. But it's not pro it's actually the county, it's the county council over the house. pro is the developers. They're not developers, no, there's no developer for it. You've joined the process even way before that. It hasn't even been adopted, it hasn't even been suggested in the local plan yet. It's potentially going to be a good local plan. There's no developer, there is just the county council as a landowner. So I, I think probably the most useful thing we can do, Chris, if it's all right with you, is put a link to the 2050 vision in... What do you think? Have you seen it? No, no, but for everybody. Yeah, yeah, so just, uh, just, uh, just, uh, we're going to uh, have uh, the document being written for the next magazine. We're going to include the link to the 2050 vision of uh, the community outreach activities. Yeah. And, and Excellent. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, more questions. Uh, Colin. Colin, if you can keep it brief, that would be helpful. Yeah, is that my wife speaking? Really? <laughs> 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 or just for, um, yes, Andy, I'll try and keep my question short. Um, I think there is some good news for those who want to go to see a coffee shop sooner rather than later, in that, that modestly named building that's going up out right there, which is called 1000 Discovery Drive. That doesn't scare the lots of everybody. Yeah, they know what will. But there'll be a little coffee shop by the entrance door. So, um, on a more serious note, um, what confuses me is, uh, and I haven't read quite a lot of the plan, the holistic plan, is that, uh, and I used to run a company up in the Northwest. So, <coughs> I experienced the tears of quite a lot of uh, AstraZeneca staff when AstraZeneca decided to make this its world headquarters. And, and, and further tears probably on the part of the government because they're now building a factory across the Irish Sea. Um, but to, to 
take one detail, which I think is horrifying. Most of us live in this area. So the railway station. How on earth did AstraZeneca end up agreeing to such an absurdly tiny area in which to build Cambridge Society? Because it seems to have taken up a lot of the land alongside it. And the, the site that we're all told was originally allocated for a sensible effort, not to mention the totally inadequate number of passenger journeys estimated for the entire year of commuting football. Um, it, 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 it just smacks of impact. Mm -hmm. On a level of our scale. Colin, can I give it to you? Yes, can I leave that one question mark? So that's right. So the whole thing is that there's still more to learn in four years and not just in your own generation. That's what's an interesting fact. You can actually move your request if you want to do that. I think on the train station, it's a fundamental mistake. Actually, they don't do anything. And how these things work. It's not, well, you can check out the... We're not part of that decision. We are not part of that decision. The way we, we can say we want a train station and use it, but that's never a problem. We're not going to spend their time finding out how sites and stations should be how work. It's just not how company works. I, I support the Oxcam R because ultimately what I see is actually, I, I, both the Oxcam R and also the National Clusters Committee. The National Clusters Committee is the CPI is looking at moving the life sciences, so it's not just all hot spotted around Oxford and Cambridge. The National Committee has come around new life science hubs, looking at Manchester, looking at Speed, and the recent budget announcement about mayor and mine authorities and how they're going to get additional investment zones is part of that process. The reason initially the Russia Zeneca was interested in the Oxford and R is the recognition by Ashton Zeneca that Cambridge is too small for a company like AstraZeneca. And if you remember when AstraZeneca did come, it was thought to be one of three or four or five. This would be the start of all the large farm in Cambridge. Why do they come? Because it's us, it's too, it's, it, it, you're right, it, it's, it's growing too much. It can't get any bigger. So what I think the Oxham are, we're hoping to spread in the longer term the life science across the R, preferably out to Norwich, <coughs> Wiltshire, up to Birmingham. But the problem is that the other infrastructure, one of those things will happen. So that's, that, that's the answer. So CBC does a positive about the XMR. They see it, different people have different uh, reasons for that. That's the is expanding the life science system much more widely. Something like the hospitals, they're concerned that patients in debt will go down to London for treatment because they can't just get across. Um, there's also a chance for them to put different appointments there. So different parts of CBC have different drivers of doing it, but mostly are they are supportive. Okay. Uh, more David, look at that there. Hi, uh, my name is David Skinner. I live in Queen Eunice and I'm also a sociologist of science based at Anglia Ruskin. And um, I'm currently doing a research project which is about the relationship between the campus and the neighbourhood around it. It's not a sort of for or against kind of project, it's about enhancing <coughs> the local conversation about the campus. Um, it's completely independent from the, the campus organisation. Um, and We'll be announcing a range of activities uh, for June and July, but um, just as a first step, um, there may be people that might tell me, in 2019, Sam and I led a walk around the campus, which was uh, very well attended. I think I was about... Yes, it was. I was there. Oh, great. May 2019, yeah. yeah. So I, what, what, what I was, uh, as, as part of the development of my new project, what I was proposing to do was um, just offer the opportunity of, to walk people around the campus, to have a conversation about the campus. Uh, and I think the details, I hope the details are going to be in the news, newsletter that's coming out is it tomorrow. So uh, there's, uh, I was, uh, so you could meet me at Adam Brooks bus station, at one, at one offer. You could meet me at Adam Brooks bus station, either at uh, 11.30 on Sunday or at uh, two o'clock on Tuesday. And uh, you know, I'll take you for a, I'll take you for a walk around the campus, and we can have a conversation about about what's, what's going on. You know, why is it here? Where's it leading? And, and so on. And I think that's incredibly valuable because what we discovered when we did the walk in 2019 was how. 
few people actually penetrated further than the Anbrook site to see what was going on there and they were genuinely amazed by both the scale and the variety of, of um, development going on there. So thank you very much for, for flagging that up, David. Right, we've run over my nine o'clock deadline. Anybody else with a burning question for Andy? Can I just ask when AstraZeneca are going to move in? <laughs> 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 well, I'm, no longer, I'm no longer in the I, I believe it is uh, late summer. There was, there, was a, there was a fire over um, Christmas, and actually, it caused, although it was a fairly minor fire, it complicated some of the things that were being done. So today is the um, Barry asked the question: When going to go on holiday, there's thousands of people who It won't just be everyone wants to arrive on day one. There's not going to be mass move. And as I was saying earlier, only 20% of employees can come in by car. So theoretically, you shouldn't suddenly see lots and lots more cars because of the way it's being managed. Okay. Anybody else? Otherwise, I am going to draw the city.